Welcome to your Online Strength Coach Podcast, episode 22, Shit in the Bag. Um, hello and welcome to episode 22 of your daily online strength post cod podcast, Daughter, Sister's Wife. Um, I have been thinking about changing the name of the podcast, so the 30 people, or the 5 people listen to this 6 times in a row, um, would like some input on that. I was thinking of just call of calling it um, Online Strength Coach Podcast, something like that, I don't know. I'm um, still going to keep the daily nature as much as possible. going to have to work out logistics for next week. Because I'm away on camp, um, so I'll be away f- um, for seven days. So obviously I won't be able to take my Blue Yeti microphone with me because it's a big old heavy son of a bitch. You probably use it to kill someone. So I need to think of some kind of... I, I do have um, my phone and headphones and the guy who records a Radical Personal Finance podcast. If you don't listen to it, it's, it's awesome. You should really listen to it. Definitely have my recommendation on that one. He uh, records his stuff on his phone with a... Like, he got, I think he uses um, the onboard microphone for it, but it's something I'm going to look into for next week. So, <laughs> all five of you don't have, um, don't go without your daily fix. And I apologise for missing um, Wednesday and Thursday, just the way things worked out. Wednesday standing up, chilling out. Um, by the time I come around to, to um, record the podcast, it was like 10 o'clock and I wasn't really in the in the mindset. And then last night, well, Tuesday and Thursday aren't normally the nights I'd be able to record it anyway because I'm away doing things till stupid o'clock. But that's um, our phase of the uh, conditioning block preseason done. So hopefully my time frees up a little bit more, so I can be a bit more active with like um, articles and the like. Um, keeping the training videos going. If, if you follow the, the the channel, you'll have seen that. Um, today's question comes from Jimbo again. It's a very good question. I think it'll be a fun one. He left it on uh, left it on the comment section of episode twenty. He writes, "Enjoy the series, Mark." Lots of topics make for interesting read- listening. If I say reading, uh, thanks very much for the feedback, um, Jimbo. Share with your mates. <laughs> uh, more listeners, the better. But yeah, I'm, gl- I'm glad the people are listening to it. Seems to be, I seem to be getting loads of uh, positive feedback from the people that are listening to it. So I will persevere. Here's one: my training bag is like an, Al- an Aladdin's ca- cave. <laughs> Anyone that knows Jimbo will know this to be absolutely true. The first time ever, I hope you don't mind me sharing this uh, story, Jimbo. But the first time I ever met, uh, met Jimbo, he was uh, in a squat rack, squ- um, squatting, uh, it was 220 for a few reps with a uh, full suit, wraps, knee sleeves, um, uh, shoes, um, I think he had wrist wraps on as well, he, he's fond of his uh, he's fond of his gear, God bless him. Um, as he, <laughs> he will uh, profess to, no doubt, I have fucking loads of stuff, I'm a sucker, and I'm a sucker for gym gear. What gym extras have you used and have found beneficial? Suits and shirts, sleeves, slingshots, hip circles, grippers, fat grips, extensor bands, floss, straps, wraps, all that kind of stuff. Thanks, Jimbo. Jimbo, I just want to congratulate you on an outstanding question. (laughs) Although one that could make for a very long episode, but I'll try not to keep you for too long. Uh, Kind of the stuff that I would use that I would consider to be practical extras... And it does depend on what kind of lifting you're into. If you're into the equipped lifting, then obviously you're going to need more bells and whistles. And your, your training is probably going to, well, depending on who, you, what kind of training system you train under, the, there may be an exponential increase in the amount of different training gear and bells and whistles you use. Um, but uh, as someone who's either a general strength trainer or someone who uh, lifts in un- unequipped competition, that is belt and knee sleeves, um, things I I would consider to be useful i don't think anything's essential and uh, i continue to do workouts uh, several workouts i'll do if it's light enough i'll probably just do them my trainers and a, and a pair of shorts like for squats and deadlifts and stuff i don't really see the need for some like for, for those of sub max for some for some sub max workouts to kind of go the whole nine it's kind of it saves save space and buy <laughs> for things that actually uh it could be using like work my work laptop for it <laughs> um yeah, things that I have found beneficial, sort of that maybe not even beneficial, but things that maybe I would consider essential for someone who certainly wants to compete in the IPF quick powerlifting or the equivalent, like 
uh, WDPA, FA, or whatever the fuck um, federation you're l- lifted in. Well, maybe uh, we'll include raps on this one as well. Um, so if you do like some of the other, like the GPC, where raw, you'll, you're allowed raps. A good pair of squat shoes are absolutely essential. So that's either if you try. <laughs> if you have poor ankle range or you're a more moderate to close stance, a pair of weightless shoes are essential. If you're a wider stance, then a good pair of flat sole shoes are essential. Essential. I know they say chucks a lot, but you couldn't get away with like, like there, there are like you can, there are powerlifting shoes you can buy, um, squat and deadlift shoes. Um, that I've seen people wearing that nice, nice, good ankle support, nice solid flat sole, something that's like got a solid sole that isn't going to rock, and um, something that's got good grip, you're not going to slip. Good footwear wear is absolutely essential for squatting. And um, if you're going to compete, you're going to need a pair of deadlift um, socks, or alternatively, a pair of chucks again. So if you if you squat in your chucks, you can deadlift in your chucks as well. Although, although I know most people will probably prefer to use the deadlift socks if they have them. And in fact, there's a little thing we found um, a couple of years ago. If you go to um, like a sports store, there's like surf shoes or wind surf shoes are perfect, and they cost like two pound fifty. Or three, four dollars. Whereas a pair of Inzer deadlift socks, my <laughs> socks, a pair of Inzer deadlift um, shoes might cost like 10, 12, 15, 20 pounds, or like twenty dollars or whatever it is in, our, in American uh, or in, in US dollars. <clears throat> so footwear absolutely essential, I, I would say. Um, even it, even for someone who's not a serious lifter, if, if you're like an athlete who you takes your weightlifting fairly seriously, like if you're a rugby player or a footballer or you're like a track and field athlete or you're a squash athlete or someone who takes their sport fairly seriously, someone who wants to use um, to use weightlifting to supplement their, their, their strength and power work for their sport, I'd say shoes are reasonably far up there, if not essential. So a good pair of shoes, I think <laughs> I don't have to sell those. Uh, a good belt, like so many people have shit belts, it's ridiculous, like a neoprene belt. Um, if you're a weightlifter, a good tapered belt because that'll allow you to get into real deep hip flexion. So if you need to catch a snatch clean in a very deep position, or you want to squat ass to grass in an upright position, then a nice tapered belt so the top, so the belt doesn't dig in the top of your thigh when you get into that deep flexion flex position. As a powerlifter um, or a general strength or, or a strength athlete or someone who likes to lift reasonably heavy, um, powerlifter, strongman, rugby player, bodybuilder. A good 10 millimeter, 13 millimeter, either buckle or lever belt. That's number two on the list. Shoes first, then a good belt. Um, find the style you like. Personally, I like the uh, I like the lever belt for squatting because I can get it on ridiculously tight, and I, I like the um, the prong belt for deadlifting because you can wear it a little bit looser, but it's still quite supportive, um, and you can wear it a little bit higher and it's a little bit softer. And um, typically, I would like a like a looser belt for deadlifting because there's more kind of room for maneuver. But yeah, a, a belt is appropriate for what you want to do. So if you're a strong man, you do a lot of loading, moving, something like a back support, a neoprene back support, so something like the rebound sort of thing. Again, was well, probably not essential. Most of the guys probably have it do a lot of yoke and stuff. Um, so like a good belt would be number two on my list. Number three on my list would be a good pair of knee sleeves. Um, SPDs get rave reviews. And um, they've kind of replaced the reband seven millimeter uh, neoprene sleeves. What I use as kind of the premium band, so it's something I'm I'm looking to purchase in the future. So a good pair of knee sleeves, probably number three on the list. Number four on the list, um, a good pair of wrist supports, wrist straps. So where you do snatch, clean and jerk, bench press, heavy overhead presses do anything where your wrist comes into a flex position. It's very common for people to get a lot of forearm niggles and stuff like that. Uh, probably the most common um, complaint that I get from the kind of beginner weightlifting course that I run, or the weightlifting courses that I run, is people with sore wrists from uh, not being flexible enough to maintain, like getting the, like to get into like the flex positions of a front squat or an overhead squat, the catch cleans, the catch um, snatches with comfort. So there's certainly an area um, was probably number four would be a good pair of uh, wrist wraps. You want to. This is one thing I'd say for everything you don't want to scrimp. Um, like certainly, <laughs> I'm never going to have them as a sponsor, but somewhere like Strength Shop 
where you're buying crap quality stuff. Uh, <laughs> certainly, my experience with Strength Shop has been it's just been duff stuff. Um, you want to? Sp- I would advise people to pay for brands. Um, I know most people will say, "Oh well, they're all from the same shop in China." Blah blah blah. I'm of would be of the same opinion, but with lifting stuff, I've I've definitely had the experience where, um, like I've bought a pair, I've got a pair of Adidas shoes. Um, I've advised other people to get like a cheaper brand, so like the Strength Shop Lions, I think they were that have fall to pieces in a year. I've had my Adidas Ironworks two for eight years, and I lift like I wear them minimum five or four to five days a week. Um, and I'm in them all the time. I'm shifting heavy loads. They're still absolutely perfect. Like the great, the soles are awesome, and they're still working. Like eight years, seven years down the road. Whereas like the strength shop shoes, to the Falco comes apart, the laces come apart. They're they're, sh- they're shit basically, and they'll last you a year, two years at tops. Buy a decent pair. Go for a decent brand. Like the like the strength shop lever buckle falls apart. Whereas I've had my Inzer for the best part of five years. Absolutely perfect. Um, ne- never, never f- been a f- problem. Um, I've had strength shot wrist wraps in the past. I've probably had three pairs. Every single pair of them, the velcros come off it. The loops have come off. They've been shit. And a good friend of mine has a pair of Vikings, um, uh, metal Vikings, kind of like the more flexible material. They're awesome. He's had them for like four years, and they're still going. And um, a real nice wrap. Get them on real tight. So definitely, pay. you get what you pay for basically when it comes to lifting stuff. So don't scrum. Go 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 for the big names, um, and take the hit because it's, it's more expensive initially. But you'll not have to rebuy and rebuy and rebuy. So definitely buy quality. And I advise that if you're going to buy any equipment, like you're going to buy any bars, weights, machines, pay pay, pay the extra money unless it's like cast iron plates because metal's metal. But if you're going to buy like a bumper plate or you're going to buy a bar, definitely a bar. Spend the money and buy something decent. So yeah, number f- was that number four wrist wraps? Or number five wrist wraps? Um, yeah, those are probably the five that I would probably recommend. Outside of that, if you're gonna compete, you're gonna need a singlet. You're gonna need socks. Um, as far as like training tools, not a fan. Slingshot, don't see the utility. Not used it, so it might be a little bit um, might be a little bit overzealous. But I really can't see what it's adding to. It's basically just a, a kind of a weird shirt or an easy to get on shirt. Certainly, I've not seen anyone like their, their bench jump as a result of it. Then ah, I could be talking shit. Um, hip circles, no idea what they are. Grippers, waste of fucking time. Fat grips, waste of time. Extensor bands, waste of time. Floss, waste of time. Straps, useful. Um, but then, if you put a power through, you can argue for and, of, and against. Um, as a weightlifter, definitely a pair of good, good pair of straps are essential. As a strong man, good pair of straps are essential. Wraps, again, if you lift within one of the federations that allow wraps, they're essential, but a kit. And if, you're, if you don't wear them, you're leaving 30 kilos on the platform. Why the hell would you do that? So you'd be looking at, um, again, spending decent. I mean, I've, I've used, I don't, it's down to personal preference. I have used stiff wraps before, not necessarily a fan. I prefer a more flexible wrap. Same as with my uh, wrist wraps, I prefer a flexible wrap. I feel you can get it, get more support, get it where you want it. Whereas a st- stiff wrap is a lot harder to maneuver, and um, a kind of like a, a more flexible wrap, you can get more revolutions, and you can also put kind of put it where you want it. Like if you want to wrap it in X way, if you want to do a crossover wrap, it's a lot easier. Or if you want to do like a just straight up cylindrical wrap around the knee, um, I find the flexible wraps are a lot easier. I don't know, not really a big fan of the stiff wrap to be honest. And um, but yeah, if you if you compete in that kind of powerlifting, then definitely buy a pair. How you train with them is more of a dark art, um, probably maybe a topic for another day, um, maybe a topic that someone, a quick lifter, might be able to answer better, but I have a bit of experience with it, not a huge amount. Um, did I've done two, I think I've done three comps and wraps, um, so yeah, I have a bit of experience, not, not a huge amount. Um, suits, if you don't compete in uh, a quick powerlifting, or you don't compete in strongman where you're allowed suits, are a complete waste of time. Shirts, same thing. If you don't compete in equipped powerlifting, they're a complete waste of time. Um, if you do compete in uh, equipped powerlifting or you do compete in strongman, they're, they are essential bits of kit. And they're the bits of kit you should spend time using. You don't just step into a bench shirt and automatically bench 70 kilos, as anyone who's used them before will know. Like, you need to find the correct shirt. You need to find the correct line. You need to use the correct technique. It's 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 almost They're almost two separate sports, equipped powerlifting and non-equipped powerlifting. 
so you can't just rock up and lift more. It's not that simple. Um, suits don't just lift the weight. Like you have to learn how to use them. You have to be your know, technique has to be good. You have to be with, able to withstand the pain, withstand the pressure of the suit, so on and so forth. Um, other little knickknacks are useful. Chalk is definitely useful. <laughs> Probably an essential for most people. I, I personally don't really consider it an essential, to be honest, because I tend to use wraps more than use chalk these days. Um, I find my grip's pretty good. I don't really, really struggle. I'm, I don't think I've missed a deadlift because of grip in like six years. Um, I tend to miss them because I'm a bitch now, <laughs> normally. Um, I'm just not ready for that weight. Um, but yeah, chalk's probably fairly useful for most people. I used to, I used to use it absolutely shitloads. I don't really use it at all anymore. Um, other things are useful nose torque not really a fan but if you like that sort of thing I guess it's pretty useful uh, foam roller again don't really use a foam roller anymore kind of falling by the wayside I don't. I personally don't think it makes any fucking difference to be honest um, I know some people swear by it it was all the rage like 3-4 four, four years ago we use it a lot of the players I work with use it they like it um, I certainly wouldn't tell them it didn't work because if it works for them then it works um, but I think just a general bit of stretching kind of works the same sort of idea or maybe just you know warming up properly also works quite well um, release balls again probably going back on what I've said but I do find a good release ball on the bum kind of does help a little bit with um, a bit of glute stiffness, lower back tightness certainly I, I felt that's worked whereas the formula I think just, just can't really get in properly because uh, I've said before I was not like I don't believe in my fascial work because um, I have said in previous um, episodes that I do really rate massage it's more the um more the generalness of the ruler the, the, the ruler's inability to kind of get deep or get or get more targeted kind of release work done so release, release work does work in my opinion whereas the foam ruler is just a bit of a general general bit of kit that doesn't really do doesn't really do much um i think i've spoken enough towards kit to be honest um, there are little bits and pieces, but they're all gimmicks to be honest. Barbell, weights, dumbbells, and a good program are all you really need to get strong. Um, we could speak to supplements, but there's not really a need. I think the gym kits is a really good question, I thought. Um, kind of really the kind of elk of question that I really envisage this podcast being, you know, kind of basic or, you know, practical questions, practical advice, practical opinion on kind of my own experience more as the research that says this, the research says that, blah, 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 bullshit that no one cares about. You know, just straight up, um, just experiential advice. <laughs> uh, or, you know, actionable advice, maybe or actionable opinion where you can go, well, this guy says this, okay, I'll give that a go. Like maybe like maybe you'll steer away from certain brands, maybe you'll go to war with certain brands, because what I've said, maybe you'll try different things, maybe you'll 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 stop using our things, I don't know, up to you. Um yeah, so that's this episode. Uh, what I'll do for you, Jimbo, because I know what you said art um, beforehand. It'd be nice to have a little slideshow. I'll show you another of the um, possible um, logos that we're going to use for the online strength coach. See see if you like it or not. Uh, that'll conclude the, today's episode, and it's the Friday, the 24th of 7th. It's currently um, 10 to 7, 2015. That was a whole fucking jumbled mess. Um, I'll be back shortly because I'm going to record our quick uh, podcast just to make up for the uh, missed Wednesday and Thursday. I'll, I'll not get... Uh, I might get one out on Sunday as well. We'll see how, we, how we're tracking. Um, until next time, this is Mark of your daily online strength coach podcast, her uncle, her dog, and her wife, signing out. Thank you very much for listening. And as always, silent, let her gone deaf and dumb. I feel like a loser because I never I never want to you ruin just like paper in the wind. I just want something to believe in. I just want.